Hi everyone, good morning. Today I'm going to cover DevOps and DevSecOps at very high level. Before I get into our today's topic, I'm going to give you a little tour on my channel. Here I cover the various architectures and real-time scenarios of Azure and AWS. At the same time, I also cover interview questions of the real time. So please uh, go through that in case if you have any queries you can also join my whatsapp group uh, let us get into our today's topic before we dive into the devops uh, directly let us understand few terms which are regularly used in our regular uh, devops processes so in the usual development process each team produces some source code it could be any language c sharp python or whatever the language and that code will be integrated to the source code uh, source control management that each team whatever they integrate to the local repos that will be integrated to the centralized repos so each code whichever is integrated assume that it is being integrated every two three weeks or every one month then they'll find out some issues after integrating the code because team one might have uh, given a conflict with the team two in, in terms of the various scenarios it could be database it could be the variables whatever it is so now they will lose at least two three days of time to resolve those issues those conflict issues or the code quality issues so in the waterfall model method methodology it is fine but in the agile it doesn't work because within the agile it is recommended from one week to four weeks each sprint need to be finished and it need to be delivered integrated and released to the production so within that time frame for example your team might be working with a two week sprint within the two weeks all these teams need to integrate the code and if the issues have come then the two three days will take to resolve all those issues in terms of the quality in terms of the conflicts everything so they can't offer that so to avoid these type of situations we have something called continuous integration so continuous integration is a development practice where developers integrate code into a shared repos frequently so in the agile it actually complements the agile uh, because agile everything uh, is so quick so fast within that uh, uh, frequency if it has to match some kind of automation should be in place that is where the continuous integration comes into the picture so what is the major difference in the continuous integration versus the earlier uh, integrations is that teams will be able to integrate the code frequently to the central repos each team will integrate to the central repo and it the code will automatically build by using so the various tools available it could be ms build or any other respective tools at the same time it also got the unit test support which is actually produced by the development teams so that it will be tested and uh, based on the coverage it will give you the results whether those uh, whatever the code is checked in whether it is passed or failed in case if it is failed on the spot they will get to know so the all this automation process will take maybe less than an hour but whereas you know the earlier processes were taking days of time at the same time based on the uh, budget what the team have they can also accommodate afford the ui testing as well if the automation ui testing is also available that will give you better results uh, so that they don't need to really waste the time uh, and it will complement the agile methodology now if you see the source code control um, it could be SVN or it could be GitHub. There are plenty of other tools available. And coming to the build systems, you can uh, you 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 may be using already one of these like Maven MS Build or Spring Boot. Uh, at the same time, with the code quality, uh, auto check, Sona Cube can be used or Reshop if you are using C Sharp um, or StyleCop. There are plenty of tools available for again code quality analysis. So it will automatically uh, perform as soon as the code is checked in or integrated to the central repo and it will give you the report based on that they can immediately resolve those issues or if there are no issues then it, they can proceed with the unit testing and based on the coverage it will give you the results so this is how the continuous integration process works let us see how the deployment process used to be uh, so early the deployment process used to be like after the integration 
then that particular code has to be released to the operations team operations team use it to spend some time and then they should they use it to deploy the code to the QA environment staging environment production environment based on the stages where that particular project is in so in the agile methodology again if this operations team is taking two three days uh, it doesn't permit everything is so quick in the agile right so within the two week span if i have to do all these kind of operations one is anyway we solved the continuous integ with the with the help of continuous integration the other one is uh, deploying to the respective servers so if the operations team is writing the script and manually deploying to each and every server if they are going to take one day or two days again for this deployment it is not going to help the agile methodology so how do we solve this problem that is where the continuous delivery process comes into the picture so continuous delivery is a software engineering approach which teams produce software in short cycles ensuring that the software can be reliably released at any time so we are trying to complement the agile methodology by with the help of continuous integration and continuous delivery one is helping you to integrate the code other one is helping you to deliver the same code to the different environments it could be the production finally ultimately we need to release to the production so everything is about the code but we are simplifying the processes and we are also supporting or complementing the agile methodology in the simple terms okay so how the de delivery process works is so i we already discussed about the integration this is all about the integration right so okay after that now what is the next step we have a release process so here also if we can introduce some kind of automation uh, it will just finish the job what it is required within less than an hour right so for those type of things we can use ansible or puppet or chef there are plenty of tools available again azure arm also can be used azure resource manager uh, or terraform can be used to uh, build the infrastructure dynamically on the spot based on the requirement of the environment so for that they maintain all the configurations all the instructions all the script files so operations team uh, can directly uh, execute that code which is written in the ansible or chef or puppet whichever the script you are choosing uh, it will automatically deploy uh, and it will automatically run the automation uh, testing or we can also have the manual testing in case if the project cannot afford and then it will deploy to the staging and production this whole thing is going to be the automation process that is a continuous delivery so okay you may ask me what if the changes are done here maybe some uh, new uh, infrastructure is required right so then autom uh, this operations team will make the changes to the respective uh, configuration file or uh, script file and then they'll uh, check in they will have their own source code uh, mechanism source control mechanism source code control mechanisms and they will uh, uh, run that so only one change they will make it so all the environments will up to the uh, up, up to the date so this is how the continuous delivery works so let us have a, a look on the delivery principles continuous delivery principles so these are the few continuous delivery principles like have a continuous integration in place continuous delivery is nothing without continuous integration that's why it is mandatory to have that as well treat infrastructure as a code always don't treat infrastructure as manual process it is it need to be treated as a code uh, automate the environment creation process automate the release the process so everything should be automated these are the basic principles which we already discussed in the previous slide and these are the few benefits of the continuous delivery so releasing hurdles are simplified and definitely it's a faster delivery and the cost is going to be the low as we use less people for the deployment processes uh, nowadays you know even developers they themselves are taking care or if the devops guy is already there in the team they will take care of moving to the devops so the complete devops is all about this so let us start with the planning so cacd is about all about your code and operations but devops speaks right from the planning of your feature then coding then build test of your code then release then deploy operate monitor in fact continuous feedback is also one of the uh, key here within the devops processes so each and every phase of your development is included in the devops so the main 
DevOps goal is to complement the Agile. As I mentioned, within the two weeks of the sprint span, you should be able to deliver, even plan, code, test it, release it, deploy it, operate it, and also you need to monitor those two things, right? So all these processes need to be done. So what DevOps says is like everything needs to be automated. Everything should be in one place. So let us just see what uh, different uh, tools we have for the planning you either you can use Jira or Azure DevOps for your planning that means creating your epics stories uh, I mean to say user stories story points everything can be done in the planning that you can do it on the Jira or on the Azure DevOps or even AWS as uh, has its own tools gcp has its own tools coming to the code so where are you going to check in your code so git is it you have some few options in the jira and then confluence everything you can utilize uh, to for the documentation purposes and stuff uh, confluence can be helpful then building as i mentioned earlier you have ms build you have maven sbt there are plenty of tools available based on the type of code or language you are using so after building the code for testing if it is going to be the automation testing then you have selenium and again there are plenty of options available in the automation testing for the tester and then for the developer you have unit test cases right so to write those unit test cases you can either use n unit j unit or there are xc test for the ios so there are plenty of uh, options available you have to identify based on the technology and based on the type of application you are developing in so these are few mandatory things uh, to automate the next step is releasing so for releasing either you can use jenkins or cucumber azure has its own tool uh, as part of the azure devops code chip there are plenty of tools available again for the releasing process then uh, deploying so uh, to deploy the code either you can use docker aws azure has its own options again uh, then you can to operate this by using the scripting as I mentioned you have Chef, Ansible, uh, you can use AI ARM templates, uh, Terraforms, all those things. Kubernetes is to orchestrate your dockers. So moving on for the monitoring, there are Splunk, Nagios, uh, Datadog, uh, Azure has its own tools like Sentinel if I'm not wrong. So that will help you okay so these are the few different processes which are being addressed by the devops architecture so more or less every uh, arch devops architecture will have this one so if you are planning or uh, planning to learn these are the tools you need to cover at least one tool in each space you should be able to understood, uh, understand and then you may need to work majorly from uh, code building tools uh, you don't write the code for uh, applications but to manage those, those codes you will need to automate the entire processes okay this is all about devops so to just simplify the terminology of the devops uh, like uh, continuous integration continuous delivery this uh, picture will really help and it will simplify the job to understand the various terminology which is being used uh, if you want to know what is continuous build so what are the code it is built by the developer that will be built automatically built that that is where the continuous build comes into the picture continuous integration we already spoke continuous delivery we already spoke so the major difference between the continuous delivery and continuous deployment is uh, continuous delivery uh, at the at the final stages it will be manually triggered to the production environments the code will be manually triggered to the production environments whereas continuous deployment will have the automation testing in place and that, that will also be the seamless and automated process to release the code to the final production environment so that is a major different uh, difference uh, delivery is manual at the to the production continuous de deployment is an uh, automated process so continuous operations you, you need to operate uh, your applications where uh, sorry you need to operate those applications that is where the continuous operations comes into the picture monitoring you need to continuously monitor all your applications which are in the uh, production environments right so that's where the continuous monitoring comes into the picture so i'll cover the devsecops uh, or the high level in my next video thanks for watching my videos